Yes. And that fear actually is the driving force and factor behind insecurity. Mm. Because insecure leaders, they try to hide their weaknesses. Yes, they and do. So in, yeah, and instead of actually supporting or celebrating accomplishments or delegating, they began to dictate and then they began to um, um, second guess you know, their own work. So therefore, they try to cut other people off at the knees. And so insecure leaders are very dangerous, whether it is in the workplace, in the marketplace, or even in ministry. If you have a sense of insecurity, it's always going to be a dangerous situation. It is. And let me, and I was thinking about this, and we have to deal with it. And when we deal with it, we have to deal with the person because a person that is insecure will lead out of that insecurity. Oh, definitely. See, the thing is, Jermaine, the person that's insecure oftentimes has not yet made that self-awareness where they feel that they are even, that is an issue, or they have not yet um, taken a look or done inventory of their personal self or been reflective of their actions. Most often, if you hear about insecure leaders or you experience one, people will say, oh, that's how they are. You know, that's just them because no one's holding them accountable for their actions. And so, really, a couple of things I thought about this. I'm like, what, what we're talking about part two and three of this leadership, we kind of set some people free. For one, if you are a know it all type leader, because that individual leaders who know it all operate from a place of insecurity. Yes. You see, they try to act superior because of the actual position, but they fail to realize that leadership is not just about a position. It's not about power, but it's about preparing individuals to fulfill their purpose. And that is especially for believers in the workplace. If you are a leader and you are um, a believer, you have a responsibility. Yes. And even when we talked about last week, um, Moses and Joshua and Saul and David, you know, we use biblical principles here right, right here on WOW and, and make it practical so that we understand how to apply it in our daily life. Moses and Joshua, it was more of a development type relationship from a leader and, say, um, an employee or someone who was the, under, you know, servant to that particular leader. And then Saul and David, oh, my goodness, it was a dictatorship. If you think about insecure leaders, Saul was one of um, those leaders that stick out right at the beginning. Yes. Because his insecurities was, one, you can't do more than me or you're going to make me look bad. Right, right. You know, so if you are an employee and you are actually performing well in your day-to-day job or you are winning an award or you're in a project and it, um, it actually affected the bottom line and you have positive outcomes or you are an educator, say if you're an educator and your class and the day excels at the test, but then, you know, the, um, the other leader when they were in in that position, they didn't do as well, or they can't stand the fact that you're being celebrated. So therefore they have to come in and destroy what's being you. And so that is, that's the act of, you know, just that insecurity. Right. right? And And, mm -hmm. go ahead, Jermaine. And I was just going to say, and it just sounds like there is that fear of being inadequate, that fear of being seen as there is someone else. Oh, (laughs) Absolutely. But if you think about it, that's more that that's that um, they start to feel insecure because they now feel inadequate about what they do not know or that someone else is now going to be exposed or expose their weaknesses and right. someone else is now going to be celebrated. Here is the deal, though. If you are a leader, your, your greatest accomplishment is not in the numbers. Your greatest accomplishment is not in the KPIs. Your greatest accom- your key performance indicators, your greatest accomplishment is not in um, the work that you're producing. Your greatest accomplishment is getting work done through people in a way that builds their competency and builds their confidence. And so if you are a leader and you are jealous or insecure because someone that you lead or someone that you manage is producing at a high level and they're getting visibility, if you're insecure, if you're feeling some kind of way about that, let me help set you free. Your role is to help um, someone succeed you. That's why it's called succession planning. It's so that someone can succeed you. And therefore, you move out of the role. Your leadership role, Jermaine, when you're in leadership, it is not yours. You do not own it. You are there for a responsibility of a position that requires you to move forward, but yet develop someone else at the same time. And that is so key because the development piece 
it's part of it. And, and as you mentioned, it's a succession plan almost. You should want somebody to, to take that spot at some point. Oh, from the time you move into that position, you should be developing yourself. Here's the deal. I move by the mantra of develop yourself, develop others, and then also develop for your organization or your company. And that's the actual methodology that as leaders you should be focusing on. I'm going to help develop myself as a leader so that I can now develop my team or my staff, and then I can also develop all, all of us for the betterment of the organization and put us positionally in a place to win. When you think about it, Jermaine, I'm telling you, winning on Wednesday, wow, listeners, if you're out there and if you are a leader or you're actually um, an employee of a leader who is insecure, there's going to be a lot of work to be done. First of all, if you're the leader and you're insecure, here are a couple of things. Sometimes they operated from a place of know-it-all or superiority, avoidance, or lack of response. Have you ever um, been ghosted by a leader? Yes. Where that's a, yeah, like they don't respond or you ask the question, they indirectly do not answer it or they go all the way around or they you never. That is an act of insecurity and it's also a power play. It's, a, it's where they're positioning themselves to say, I am the authority and I do not have to answer. And so they move around in a way that creates insecurity in you. So true. And let me so. Yeah, and, no, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Dr. Kim. No, and you start to second guess, well, did I do something wrong? Right. Or, you know, maybe I'm not doing well enough in this, um, you know, on this team. Or right. maybe I'm not doing good. Their insecurity now falls on you, and it's not you at all. Right. And that move, and, and I like how you frame it as a power move, because that leader knows what they're doing when they do that to you, when they put you in that position. It's very deliberate and it's very strategic and it's intentionally done so that you can now feel a certain way about what you're delivering. And so I always encourage those, even when I coach leaders, I always encourage them to point the finger first to that self reflection and self-awareness where are we as a leader where you can actually, are you developing yourself first? Because we focus on authority, but you're not focusing on awareness. You see, when you are aware of what you need to develop in, you now don't operate from a place of power and authority, but you utilize that power and authority to influence the behaviors, to influence performance, to influence, you know, the position of your employees. Listen, leadership is one of the greatest mantles that you can carry. When you think about leadership, Moses was actually, can you think about this, for those who are out there struggling with this or those who are working under or in a place um, where you have someone in authority that's insecure. Moses actually was given a mantle to bring out the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he also was shown that they were going to go into the promised land. But because he was disobedient and he, you know, hit the um, rock and didn't speak to the rock, what happened is he forfeited his ability or his promise to walk into the, 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 the new place, right? But guess what? Moses then was actually given a mandate or a charge to develop Joshua. Right. Now, right. how is it that as a leader, you know what's going to come? You, like, for example, you can look at the promised land as a promotion. You can look at the promised land as an um, increase in pay. You can look at the promised land as a whole different level um, of power or leadership. So think about that. That's the practical thing because that's what Moses was looking at. But then all of a sudden someone says, no. You're not going to walk, see it, but I need you to develop somebody else for it. Wow. That's true leadership. But you is. can walk in the place of you thought you were the one who was going to enter into that land, and you thought you were the one who was going to gain the credibility or even the um, name for going into the brand for bringing out the children of Israel. But then you now have to develop someone else and bring them up. And so I want to give three practical things, Jermaine. So, because I know it's going to be a part three, and I want those wild listeners call in, message us. When you're de- if you're dealing with a leader or you're a leader, go ahead and email us, um, message us, DM us. But here are some practical things, Jermaine. Number one, remember the Lord told Moses he charged him. When you charge as a leader, that means you're going to give someone clear roles, clear assignments, clear tasks, because right. you're intentionally developing them. Right. And then you want to, he said, encourage and Moses was to encourage him. That means you need to prepare and train and develop. Okay. You need to be able to train and develop. And then also he said strengthen. That means to build their confidence and build their competence. So if you are in the workplace, you want to remember 
like Moses did, even when he wasn't going to experience that promotion or that place, you want to make sure that you're doing the purpose that in which you were placed in that position to do. You yes. want to build up your Joshua's, and you want to make sure that you're carrying the mantle. Charge, encourage, and strengthen. I like it. I love it. Absolutely right. Well, thank you, Dr. Kim, and we are definitely going to stay on this because I think that it is needed and uh, because it has such an impact on um, on people in the workplace. People are Absolutely. afraid to go to work. People are afraid to say anything to you Listen. because you got a problem with you. <laughs> Listen, people are afraid. They're nervous. They have anxiety. They're actually calling the um, employee hotline. Right. You know, and they're right. nervous. And so what we're going to do is come against that thing. And next week, I think maybe, Jermaine, we should talk about how to then um, be an employee or work with a leader who is insecure. Absolutely. That's what we will do. All right, Dr. Kimball, thank you for helping us win on Wednesday. Go ahead and share your contact information for those that may want to hear more, see more, get their hands on uh, some of your information. How can they do that? Absolutely. Y'all, listen, I love my wild listeners. Go ahead and go on social media, Facebook and um, Instagram. I'm Dr. Kimberly Ellison. On Twitter, I'm Dr. K. Ellison. Most importantly, go to my website. Keep up with me. I'd love to hear from you. And that's drkimberlyellison.com, drkimberlyellison.com. All right, Dr. Kim, well, thank you so much. And uh, if the Lord says the same, we look forward to doing it again on next week. Absolutely, Jermaine. Bye now. All right. All right, Dr. Kim helps us win on Wednesday. Yes, indeed, and we definitely enjoyed that. And I'm telling you, we are going to stay on this leadership thing because we want to be a blessing to the people and help the people. And uh, so we are definitely going to stay right there. We're also going to stay right here, and I want you to stay right here because more gospel music is on the way. After this commercial break on Heaven 97 KHVN, it is the evening show. I'm Jermaine Simpson, your host.